Well hello everybody. For uh, one of the sessions I intended to, uh, well for, for various sessions I intended to cover subjects such as sharpening drills, use of uh, adjustable reamers, but uh, currently I'm uh, restoring a Humber 350 overhead valve and uh, on checking the condition of the cylinder head uh, I found that the valve guides were worn. Uh, typical of many 20s and 30s bikes the valve guides are cast iron here's a couple here um, these I make myself uh, you, you can't buy them as spares you probably can't get them online but uh, I make my own so I, I get the old ones out and use the diameter of the body uh, and replicate it exactly on these so I know they'll fit uh, but one of the problems with cast iron is it's very brittle as you can see when you try to remove it uh, hopefully that will come up on close up um, when you try to remove it it just shatters and there you can see a picture of the uh, valve guides it's quite obvious which is the exhaust one they're nearly always black they get a lot more heat than the uh, inlet ones and get very little lubrication or relatively little as you can see uh, it's driven out from this end um, and I don't I try not to knock them out uh, what I use is a puller um, composed of uh, comprising just a, a long stud with nuts on either end and uh, a, a dolly to push up against it but because of the, the way they're made they tend to break at the where the end tapers down so and also they can break up up here at the top um, but anyway once, once what I do is I uh, I'll, I'll show you the the uh, stuff that I use for pulling them out uh, first and you'll get an idea of what's involved okay so here we've got the valve removal uh, the tools that I use to remove the valve as you can see it's basically just a coach bolt uh, an M8 coach bolt. It depends on the size of the stem obviously. Uh, the closer you can get it to the size of the stem the better because it acts as a guide. Uh, but um, this also acts as a guide. It's just a, a, a socket. Uh, two different sizes because as you, uh, as you pull uh, I use the short one at first to, to get the, the uh, you can barely see it there but just to get the uh, the valve guide on the move once it's on the move um, uh, you run out of distance inside here for the the top of the valve guide so we change this out and put this on so there you see uh, the obviously this is mocked up but um, the socket sits nice and squarely on the facings here so it's always in line with the it's always in line with the uh, axes of the valve in other words like that um, you know it, it, it sits in line with the valve so it's not trying to pull it to the side or anything and first thing to do is tighten up the nut um, tighten it don't go mad on the spanner take it up to a reasonable hand tightness I mean this is just a cheap old coach bolt, won't take much punishment and it won't take much of a load. Get it up nice and snug and tight and then using, I use this as a this as a dolly, it was just a, it's just an old uh, main shaft and place it on the on the head of the bolt and give it a good tap with a with a mallet or a hammer and hopefully that should st sort of break the, the stiction uh, sometimes it takes a good whack and what happens is of course when you do give it a good clout the end of the um, cast iron guide breaks into fragments uh, there's a piece there off one as you can see uh, there's, they break up uh, and eventually you end up with uh, just this but hopefully by that stage you've actually got it on the move and once you get it on the move uh, you just tighten the nut a little and tap it, tighten the nut a little and tap it and eventually what you'll find is 
um, you can start tightening the nut and you'll feel it move um, once you get to that stage you're in, you're in luck however if the um, stem breaks down too much uh, before it uh, before it actually uh, starts moving which I think one of these did then you have little choice but to uh, use a dolly and knock it out but um, again with it in fact no these actually did come out okay uh, because I, I I got it moving with with I got them moving with this and uh, and then I used a smaller dolly I can't remember where it is now uh, just to push it out the, the main thing to remember is do not use anything that's going to be very close to this diameter but you also need to be clear of that diameter it's quite specific uh, you can make up a tool if you've got a lathe uh, that just fits inside the guide but as a clearance on the outside of the guide and use that as a dolly and drift it out um, once once you get that in it should come out all right so that's how you get them out uh, try not to use too much brute force but in the cases of some of these really old bikes they are going to take a lot of force but uh, so far uh, so good with with this one uh, the next job will be to uh, draw them in I don't use a hammer to take them in I'll try to draw them in um, and we'll uh, we'll show you how that's done uh, once I get the gear okay well here on the bench we've got the gear that I use for pulling in the new guides uh, as you can see there's two two major components on here that's just a nut and bolt with a washer um, and these are let me just take this off I did have a in fact I, I do have a tripod somewhere but uh, somewhere being the operative word um, this garage has a habit of, or my workshop has a habit of devouring things at a great rate of knots I'll just pop that in there now this is I've just made this because um, the shape of these guides is very the very thin very small area on the top of the guide here to take all that pressure when you're pushing them in so this um, most most guides are thick enough at the top to just take a flat washer and a nut so I wouldn't worry too much about it unless you find a really fine section like this one and I should have realised when I made them but I'm not going to unmake them or make new ones so I've just turned up this um, adapter if you like to go over the top of the guide and the idea is that it sits on this shoulder here which has got a much greater load bearing area than that and that should push this down uh, into the head without me having to worry about the top end cracking uh, like they do when you take them out so that fits neatly over the top of the, the valve and rests on that shoulder and this I'll just take this out is also uh, you can see it from the shape of it uh, can you see it? yeah it's designed to fit inside the the port and also on the seat and that holds the bolt nice and steady and there you see it in position so that lines up the bolt and the guide so that when you start tightening up it pulls in absolutely axially to the hole through the cylinder head and avoids damaging it so that will be the next phase or the next step but before I do anything else I'm going to clean this cylinder head because it's filthy <laughs> every time I touch it I get black and it needs cleaning anyway so I'll do that before I continue with the rest of this short video okay so now we've got the uh, inlet valve guide sat just in the head here and the drawing gear in so I'm going to try and balance the camera so you can see something happening. Uh, hopefully if I turn the, this like this I can reach over and start to tighten this up. And we'll see what happens. Probably break it you know, knowing my look. And you can see it's just starting to enter. Going in there nicely. Getting a bit tighter. Bit tighter 
last thing I want it is to be too tight so just have to see how it plays and everything goes alright it's so far it's okay would help if I could keep my spanner on the on the nut but there we go and it's drawn in quite well nice and square and without too much in the way of problems I think that will go in all the way without too much difficulty as you can see or can you yeah you can be, vaguely see it uh, if I turn it that way maybe you can see a bit more where the stem is uh, it's still going okay not getting much tighter I should maybe just put some oil on those I don't know no, you don't really need it with cast iron and you can see it's going in getting very tight now but oh, oh god uh, I'll have to get a better spanner than this this is just slipping off maybe that will do it there I don't know that's better I thought it was it's not quite oh, I think I'll put a new nut on there before it gets too nasty to get off Get that one off there. So you can see it's it's gone in pretty much all the way there. Well, all the way. It's at least halfway in. Uh, just that the nut, the spanner slipped off the nut. It's not the correct size for this. It's a Whitworth spanner. I'm using on a metric nut. So I will try and find the correct spanner on a new nut. Um, <laughs> I'll just knock the camera over there things are getting in the way but you can see it's tightening up it's got very little more to go about two, four mil, uh, which is not much so I'll finish nipping that up uh, well I'll try and try and catch it on camera without knocking a damn thing over this thing hopefully you can see something let me just check in the viewfinder Yep, and where is the shifter? <sighs> oh, this is so hot, everyone. Trying to keep it in view of the, the camera just to show you I'm not actually cheating here by using a hammer or anything and it's nearly there it's just got two mil to go three mil to go it's just so damned up with without right size spanner Turns and we'll be there. One, two, three, four, and one more. It's almost there. Five. There's another one or two. Six, seven, and 
Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to nip this last one, this last bit up, and then I'll, I'll focus on. I'll break. Okay, well that's it, fully home as you can see, and genuinely on the nut. Uh, I'll just see if I can un unscrew. We'll just take that out and have a look. Okay, there you can see the new uh, valve guide in position. One down, one to go, and that's it at the top. And all together, that went quite well. Well, just the other one to go in. So I'll do that and then we can see. Well, here we go with the exhaust valve. Uh, we'll try that one. I've put a little bit of oil on it this time. Maybe see it's a little bit glistening there in the brilliance of this workshop. Anyway, there's the setup. Uh, we'll try one more time. We'll try looking from a different angle this time. We'll try not to knock the vice off the knock the Okay, well it's not so bad there. I'm looking right onto it. Let's uh, put the spanner on that, and well, let's see which one. Put that one on there, I think. I will try this spanner on here. See just how tight it is to actually get things to nip up. That's going in nicely so far. Got a long way to go yet. There's one. Uh, if you ever decide to make your own valve guides, the key word to making them successfully is concentricity. Uh, you must have the bore running concentric with the part of the guide that fits in the head because if you don't no matter what you do you'll never grind out uh, the valve unless, <laughs> unless you prepare to grind till you're blue in the face and even then it won't always work this seems to be going in better than the previous one still got a long way to go though I'm only getting a quarter turn each time but it's uh, it's good so and also when you do machine your own guides uh, you have to be sure uh, well in order to get concentricity uh, machine the through bore and the bore that fits into the head all in one setting so you get that first and that's a critical one uh, obviously you have to have the right amount of interference that's not a problem if you've uh, just extracted a valve, you can always check up, uh, you can always um, give it, uh, you know, might get, um, make sure the one you make is the same diameter. Um, but do that all in one setting before you turn it around and finish the other end because uh, it makes life a lot easier. And if you can make a small boring bar, all the better, because reaming these out is not easy. Um, these I managed. I've got a little boring bar which is I made specially for the job. It's not a particularly difficult thing to make them. I made mine with uh, some pieces of um, carbide brazed onto a bar and then sharpened but uh, you can't really buy one small enough to go down to that diameter for long enough they're very slender and they take a lot of passing through uh, before you um, get them just right now then I might have to rearrange this bolt into a well known phrase or saying oh no there we go yeah, I think we're going to have to. I'll get even less on that one unless I, oh, unless I tighten from this side. Can't do, I suppose. Let's see. Let's see if I can get that spanner on there.
Now this is screwing in easier from this end. Uh, I'm not having to hold the spanner on it. It's uh, it's staying put while I tighten it up, and it's going in easier. Well, not easier, but nice and steady. It's gone in easier than the first one, which I did dry. But this is just going in nicely. Look at that. Not far to go now. Not much further. About uh, five mil. Nice and steady. And very straightforward. I'm pleased with those because the fit is just about perfect. They're uh, sometimes it's hard to get the exact diameter. And still a bit to go, but not much more. Nearly there, just half a millimetre or so, and I think that's almost it. It's pretty tight. That's tight. In fact, it's so tight the spanner slipped off. Okay, let's take that out. And there you can see the head with the two new valve guides in. Looks present presentable, and you can see there we are, and they're in without damage. So. Next thing would be to try the valves in because uh, quite often when you push these in you lose a little bit of diameter, they get squeezed in so let's try the inlet valve first I think this one no trouble and it's good actually those seats are probably pretty good but we'll find out when I um, and there's the exhaust, let's see if that's still good Yeah, good, they are good. Um, having said that, I'm not too pleased with the amount of clearance I've left myself on this stem here. Um, it could become coil bound, though I doubt it. Let me have a look. There's one way to find out. These are trials and tribulations of uh, vintage motorcycle restoration you have to be sure that uh, things are going to work and there's nothing worse than coil bone because it, it'll bend your push rods and all sorts when well, you don't you don't realize it um, I'm just going to switch off and try the collet on and see how much movement there is before the collet bottoms out against the top of the valve Well, it's quite deceptive, there's actually quite a lot of movement there. Uh, by the time you get the collet in with a spring, uh, you've got, you know, there's a good, ooh, I don't know, three eighths of an inch. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that the valves, uh, the, the cams aren't that bumpy. So, in fact, we can see on here, if I turn the engine, if I can get a hold of some, something to turn, oh, I can't at the moment. I could if this was off, but uh, I could have checked the amount of valve travel, but it's quite low, it's, it's, it's close, but there's still room. If I wanted to be ultra sure, I could just take a little bit off the top of the guide, maybe another eighth of an inch, but the longer the guide, the better it is. Having said that, it looks slightly longer than, than it's, uh, the one on the exhaust on the inlet side, so who knows. Anyway, that's fitting valves, uh, valve guides for you. Well, just to add a little bit onto the end of this uh, short video, if you see, if you look in the, uh, the valve seat there, you'll see a greyish ring in the middle of that shiny patch. That indicates, it's all the way around, that indicates that the valve is properly ground in, and also it's the same on the valve seat, wherever that may be. 
don't know where I've put it now, it's down here, something there it is. Um, if you look, the valve seat has a similar towards towards the outside. Can't get a focus on that for whatever reason. I'll put it in there maybe. You can just see on the outside edge of there um, a grey ring as well. And that shows that it's all the way around. It's even. Uh, it uh, matches with that one. So that's that valve. And similarly with this one, you can see it's a, quite a wide area of grey there. And similarly on here. So that's it for today. Just got to clean the head now and uh, get rid of all the grey and paste. Wash it all out and uh, assemble the valves, uh, valve gear. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention uh, before the battery ran out and uh, before I finished the first batches of video was that the same rules apply for phosphor bronze guides in a cast iron head. Um, just be very careful and uh, pull them in the same way as I showed you. Uh, I don't think you get any benefit from heating up, heating up the head because the head will only expand by half a thou, if that, uh, to, to allow you to pull the guides in with the head hot. However, with aluminium heads, you've got to heat the head because aluminium expands quite fast. And also, so, so does, so does uh, aluminium expands almost as much as bronze. So it would pay you to actually freeze the uh, the bronze guide and heat the head to maybe it's 100 Celsius, a little more, and then uh, pull the guides in as quickly as you can without burning your fingers. Not an easy task, but that's uh, that applies with uh, aluminium heads and bronze guides. I don't think I've seen uh, cast iron guides in a, an aluminium head yet. Um, I just don't think they would work because of the differential expansion of the two metals. Uh, phosphor bronze is very similar to aluminium in terms of expansion coefficient. Anyway, that's it. That's it. Uh, and I'll sign off and get this video into a, some kind of format that you can understand. And. In